The recording? Hi, this is K-Bar user. A young man by the name of the Mighty Dozer asked me to do a video on my, uh, my bushcrafting kit. Well, here in Pennsylvania, while you're walking around, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of bears out here. Bobcats, wildcats. So, I'm going to do a video on what the kit I carry on my everyday carry. My EDC, my belt, the rifle that I pack with me, and my overnight bag. I don't know how long it's going to be, but we're going to try to make it short and sweet. So, let's start with my belt. This is the belt I generally carry when I'm out doing, uh, just hiking around, walking around in the bush. I'll take these pouches off here for you. Now generally, I carry a fire kit in this pouch. Which is going through the contents real quick. It's a tinder box. This has got some fat wood, some jute, twine, and some dryer lint in it. And some birch bark shredded on the bottom. Of course, y'all know this has the Altoids tin. So that's what I carry. A cigarette lighter, a Bic lighter. I actually carry three or four of them. A ferro rod with, um, I don't know, about 10 foot of paracord on it. This all fits in a leather pouch on my belt, which is my fire kit. And I also carry a container of waterproof matches. And a little tip I learned from um, Shaman's Forge, Blackie. When you do your matches in a container like this, put one in this way, where it's L-shaped to the top. The other one over here is L-shaped to the bottom. This way, if I pull a match out and one piece flies out, the other piece is there. One locks the other one in. So that's my fire kit. Over here is another small EDC pouch that I carry that's got the redundancies. As everybody knows, uh, three is one, one is none. On the side here, I have a mag light flashlight. The other side here, I have a Myerco tactical. Inside this pouch, once again, I got another lighter. In the front of the pouch here, I've got 25 feet of paracord, sack of dryer lint, and a little plastic to keep it dry. A lot of people don't like these, but I do. This is a Dones bar with the magnesium and the uh, Parasitium on top. Inside of the kit itself, I carry a roll. In this roll is a box of waterproof matches, again a redundancy. This is a small fishing kit. It has uh, three hooks, sinkers, fishing line, duct tape on the outside of course. Inside of here there's four different flies that will catch me fish any time of the year. One space blanket, a standard size. And a tube of chapstick. Now if anybody's wondering what the chapstick is for, the chapstick can be used to, say, uh, wax that paracord, make it a fire tender. It could be used to wax the dryer lint to make a fire extender. It could be used to wax anything, birch bark, paper bark, punk wood, you can wax it, or by chance I find cotton balls, or I do have a cotton ball in there, so um, so I can wax that, and that'll be my fire starter, but I'm guaranteed fire no matter how I look at it, between these two kits. Now if I had to, for an overnight, if I absolutely got lost and I had nothing but this belt on, I could make it through a night. I've got a light to see what I'm doing. I've got, you know, in the summertime, it's 90 degrees here today, so it's going on a 65 tonight. If I was wet, that'd be one thing. As long as I could get a fire going, I'd be all right. I do have shelter, and I have a way of catching dinner. Way of building traps and snares. 
and more than one way to get a fire going. But since I am here in Pennsylvania bear country, and by the way, there is tracks on the logging road behind me. If I could figure out a way of getting them from that camera onto my channel. The, tra the back track of this bear is 13 inches long, 9 and a half inches wide. That's about a thousand pound bear or bigger. So, uh, since I am in Pennsylvania bear country, I do carry my SP-101, it is a 357 Magnum, just for safety's sake, we'll open the chamber. I'm not sure this is going to stop a bear, but it should make enough noise to scare them. Generally they are afraid of people, and if they're not, yeah, I wouldn't even be skeptical with a 12 gauge shotgun in a bear that big. Now we're in a small grizzly, medium grizzly size. For the most part though, the bears here run three to 400, 500 pounds. I'm pretty sure I could stop one with this if I had to. So I'll set that aside. On the belt itself, I carry, uh, so there's three, six, there's seven 358s. Yeah, 357s, <laughs> sorry. Six 38s and two shot shells. The shot shells are for snakes, or if I get a close shot at a rabbit, I can also drop them with that. The last thing that I do carry on my belt is a French trade knife. This is one that's handmade by Jeff White. I carry my K bar, I carry a multitude of knives depending on the situation, but for just general walking around, it's either my K bar or one of these little uh, five and a half inch, five and a quarter inch French trade knives. Why? Because they're just handy. That's a handy size. It's not poking into me. It cuts anything I wanted to cut. If I happen to sit down for lunch, it'll do anything I need to cut up with. It'll also, uh, say, clean woodchucks that we're in this time of year. If I happen to get one of them and I want to fry it up for lunch, there it is. I can clean it. Not that this knife here on my EDC can't, but this does a lot better job. So that's my belt. Now, as far as carrying a rifle is concerned, I do carry a rifle. That's it there. This is the 1022 takedown. Some people are going to argue about the fact that I'm walking around with 1,000 pound bears and a 22 rifle. The fact of the matter remains that this is going to be a survival rifle. This ain't going to be a protection rifle. It was a protection rifle. I'd be carrying my Mauser or my 243 or 12-gauge shotgun and slugs and buckshot. This is for my protection. This will get me food. And also protection from smaller animals, foxes, coyotes, dogs, whatnot, depending on what kind of ammo I use and how far away he is. I'm basically good out to 50 yards with this, and the way I figure if I hit him in the head or I hit him in the body 10 to 15 times, because I do carry a 30 round clip in it, and I also have the 10 round that comes with it. If I can hit him that many times, he ain't gonna like me, he's gonna run away. So, therefore, this is my game getting, my food game rifle. My pistol is my protection. If he gets that close to where I have to defend myself, he's well within range of my shooting abilities with that pistol. Now, let me clear this out of the way. Yep, bang, down goes the mag light. That was my belt and my rifle. If I leave the house and that's all I have on me, that's all I need. As far as extra stuff is concerned, this is my EDC. It's a tactical, tactical Taylor Molly pouch, and um, well, you all know this as the GI canteen setup. On the inside of the first pouch here, I have. I have a problem, that's what I have. I have a Swiss Army knife. 
This is a Tinker model. You've seen this on my prior videos. I have unraveling 550 cord that's attached to a flashlight. There we go. Go on, go home. This is attached to a flashlight, so once again I have a redundancy of light. Three is one, one is none. This is just a cheap flashlight that, so that I have some sort of light in case the mag light goes out. I also have that bottle of hand sanitizer that you see me use. I open the pouch up. First thing I'm going to reach into my pouch and grab is my solo pot. This I've had for about 20 years. It's uh, two and a half cups. Obviously, it's been used. Inside the lid is an aluminum one cup cup. I know for sure this takes one cup. Since I am diabetic, measurements are important. So if you are diabetic and you're out in the woods, make sure you have a cup that holds one cup, a half a cup, anything that you can measure exact in so you know what you're eating. There's a little Altoid stove. You see me heating my coffee up. Pack of waterproof matches. Pack of Strike Anywhere matches. Well used, of course. And have my coffee packets. God forbid you can't be spend a day in the woods without a coffee. This is USGI toilet paper. So I've got that area covered. Also inside the pot here, I don't want to dig it out, but if you look right in there, there's two packets of oatmeal. One for dinner, one for breakfast, if I get lost. And five bullion cubes. So if I decided I wanted to, say, get some wild edibles, happen to get lucky enough to knock off a woodchuck or a rabbit or a squirrel or whatever might come my way or get one in a trap, have some bullion cubes that'll give me flavor. And not only that, but they also provide a lot of sodium, which in the summertime, you might need with the heat. And by the way, the smell of the pine resin coming off my cook set is driving me nuts here. Watch me go get a campfire. For the rest of it now, inside of here I've got tinder, which is fatwood, jute twine, and uh, some paper bark, birch bark, and uh, dryer lint. This is also wrapped in 25 feet of paracord. There's a hole underneath this paracord where I can make char cloth with that tin if needs be. Here, once again, is more redundancy. Now remember, this is a whole setup that I'd be taking with me for today. This is one emergency poncho from the dollar store. This will give me some kind of cover, albeit not much, but some kind of cover from the night. And the back of this is rolled another space blanket. So if I have the belt and I have this with me, I've got the shelter, I've got warmth, and I've got a ground cloth, or I've got a gear cover, or I've got any kind of a cover I could set up possibly over a fire if it's raining, keep a small fire so I don't burn it. But it's all right there, including more cordage. You can never have enough cordage in the woods because it's probably the toughest thing to make. In the meantime, i got another Bic lighter. I got one, cheap, one of them cheap hand saws that, uh, you know, they normally break on the first piece of wood. So I make my first piece my last piece, and that's what I need. But if I need to cut notches or I don't want to use my knife or baton my knife, which I'm not a big fan of, I can cut small notches with this and carve it out with my knife. Outside of in here, also in here is three cliff bars. Now, for me being diabetic, and this will stand for most diabetics out there, unless you're a serious type 1 diabetic, you're on insulin, these are one meal. I also have the oatmeal in there, but these are one meal. So we've got one, two, three meals, and two in there. So basically, the way diabetics have to eat is small meals through the day. I'd have a half a bar in the morning when I first got up or a pack of oatmeal, half a bar for a snack, full bar for a lunch, and if I had the oatmeal then I'd eat the rest of the half of the bar for my afternoon snack. 
that what I would have is one packet of oatmeal and a cliff bar at night. When you're diabetic, you got to make sure you have food. So this is not actually a tutorial. This is I'm showing uh, what I carry in my kit. And if you're diabetic or whatever, I'm usually never far away from enough from the house to where I really have to worry about it. If I break a leg, I can drag myself back. I hope because my physical condition, I'm basically limited to under a mile. <clears throat> so, not only that, but in my physical condition, I've really got to watch how I carry the weight. I can't carry a backpack. I can't carry a harness gear. So I used to carry an LC2 harness continuously. I can't do that anymore. This just drapes around my neck or I can uh, wear it around my waist and hang it. So in here, I really don't have anything in the pockets because it's all here. But in here I do have one Nalgene canteen. This is a Blackhawk. Years ago it used to be an aluminum canteen and I'm going to go back to the aluminum canteen. Because these are, they seem so flimsy. I, I really haven't had much use with them. They will take not boiling water, just under boiling water. You gotta let it cool a little bit, but you can put hot water in these without melting them, unlike the GI canteens. But if I had a stainless steel or an aluminum bottle, I'd be able to boil it right in the bottle, and I wouldn't have to worry about melting anything. Canteen cup with the wings. I like the wings a little bit better than I do the flat straight bar. And once again, another stove. This is a canteen stand is what they call it, but you could feed wood in here. You could feed the Altoids Tim and hand sanitizer. You can use ESPA tablets in here. You can feed anything you want in here. For that matter, you can take this, and put it on here. Now you have a bed of coals. You put that right on the bed of coals and you can cook if you have nothing else. Or warm whatever you want up. If your coals go dull, you scrape a little more coals in, set it back down on top. It don't leave the cup. So you can drink, set it back on the coals to stay warm. And the handles won't get hot because you're setting it on the coals. Inside the case itself, under the flap, is uh, well, it's a self made lid that fits the canteen cup in case I want to boil. It could be a small plate or it could be a small frying pan or a steamer. So that's my EDC. And basically this is what I would carry if I was going into the woods for an extended stay. In case some of you are wondering, no, my canteen and cup and my stove is not all marred up from use because, well, I paint it every now and then. This mostly stays in my room, this stays out where the family is and my wife can't stand the smell of the pine resin <coughs> or the wood smoke, so <laughs> it just stays out there. So I keep it nice and clean so I don't offend the wife. Let's move this out of the way. I'll be out here for an hour repack. Now moving on, if I'm going for an overnight stay, what you see here on the table is a Swiss Army poncho. This is rubberized canvas. I ain't worried about the camouflage designs, I ain't worried about nothing like that unless I intend to use it for a hunting blind, which just makes an excellent hunting blind so it goes with me. This is rubberized canvas and it's actually thick enough to where I've used this for seats. I've used it for a poncho, or yeah, a poncho. I've used it for a hammock. I've used it to drag deer home in on a snow. So it's it's a really good piece of kit. You could pick these up at Bud K. I think they're three for fifteen dollars. I only have one because I wore two out, but I've had this one now for ten years. Most of this equipment that you're looking at, I've had for a good many years. That cup that I showed you, that's all black and that's out of an old boy scout canteen or mess kit years ago you didn't get the stupid plastic cups you, you got metal cups 
<clears throat> so if I'm going over on an overextended stay, let's just say I'm going overnight, I'm going two, three days, I keep everything in this haversack. This I made myself. Some of you may not like the teeth, but eh, it's mine. Basically what this was, was a piece of Naga hide off of a couch. We threw the couch out and I said, hey, wait a minute. That'll make a good haversack. Now this is a split haversack. In between here I generally carry this poncho and my sleeping bag. Or my sleeping blanket, whatever the weather may dictate. Or I do carry a blanket roll most of the time wrapped up in this poncho, which is a fleece sleeping bag. I have a Rothko one-man bivy. That's a, it's a tent. It's for one person. It weighs like a half a pound. So my entire bed roll weighs basically in the area of about two and a half pounds. This whole kit, including the guns, I might have 12 pounds of gear on me. Some of you are saying, put it in a backpack. Put it on a harness that'll be more comfortable. It will for you. It won't for me. I've tried them. Believe me, I've been at this for a long time. They're not that comfortable to me. So inside of here, in the main pouch, I have an accessory pack. Let me move it back. I have another fishing kit, a more deluxe one. It's got 40, 20, and 8 pound line on it. Enough to run trot lines, catch bigger fish, set out turtle lines. Inside of this, I have bobbers, sinkers, hooks, flies, and uh, what they call safety bend sinkers. They look like a book of matches. It's just a book of lead matches. I have a backup knife. Of course, if you watch my videos, I got a lot of backup knives. I got a spool of 550 cord. Underneath that is a spool of bank line. Most important thing I got in this bag is my nighttime medicine. For those of you that are up in the age brackets where you say you have to take blood pressure medicine, diabetic medicine, whatever. Don't go anywhere without your medicine. If you're going to check anything in your packs, make sure your medicine is with you. Actually, that should be kept on my belt. In here I have a first aid kit, uh, two sail needles, a snare, a small mini blade, and this is rolled on about 20 feet of duct tape. And I've got one orange vest. I'm not going to unroll the whole thing because I don't think I'll get it in view. But this, if I need to, I can wear it. I can hang it. I can flag it. And it's all for signaling. Don't forget, we got we to keep the survival and the rescue in mind. So much of the rescue is the survival is the skill. You got to leave markers out for the search and rescue teams that will actually be able to find you. If you don't, you're going to become a statistic if you're not good enough to get out of the woods yourself. You break a leg, you break an ankle. Not so much arms, fingers, back, neck, ankle, leg. You need something to signal with. I could throw that on a piece of uh, I could throw it out on my 550 cord, tie off my extra knife case to it, throw it up in a tree, and I'll send that up with it. And that'll be my flag. So somebody will be able to see me, hopefully. Inside the main pack, I have a washcloth with steel, wool, and soap. I have another little pack here with a roll of toilet paper. Great fire starter, and the other needs, well, you know what they are. And uh, I have a little hanging lantern. I'm not going to turn it on because it will blind you in the, the camera. But it's got a flashlight on top, and if you click it twice, there it is. If you click it twice, you'll get the lantern. Now, this will shine a, a really good area at night. So if you're lost at night, turn it on, throw it up in the air. Search and rescue will be looking for you, they'll see that. I carry Esbit tablets for my stoves. Once again, another space blanket. This redundancy is everything. Black cotton bandana does say 100% cotton. 
Make sure it says 100% cotton because if a donut has nylon in it, it doesn't make char cloth. So you need cotton to make sure you have that char cloth. The rest of this, this is a food sack. I know you're saying to me why since I have the EDC, but if I'm carrying this, I don't need the EDC. This is going to be my overnight bag or two day bag. So enough food in here, including Gatorade packets for the summertime. Remember that, including Gatorade packets. Why? You could become dehydrated real easy if you can't find water. The next water you come across might be six, seven hours down the road walking in 90 degree heat. You might only get a quart of water, which is not going to replenish the electrolytes in your system to rehydrate you really well. Carry a couple Gatorade packets. They're cheap. You can find them at any store. Carry a couple Gatorade packets with you. Throw one and a quarter water. Your water will taste better and you'll get your electrolytes and it'll rehydrate you a lot better than just plain water. Oh, and by the way, this is stuff called Replenish. It is sugar free. I'm a diabetic. And this is the last bit of my kit. This is my pot set. It's one two cup pot, one three cup pot. Inside of here, like I said, God forbid you forget the coffee. There's a lot of coffee. I have an aluminum cup. I don't know if you can see the graduations inside the cup or not. There's graduations from eight to six to four to two ounces. I'll just watch my finger. Right there's two, four, six, eight. Eight ounces is a cup. This is a folding pyramid stove. I got 1982 when I first joined the service. I bought it at a little supply house. And basically it just unfolds. You fold this slip down. Stove. Put an Esbit tablet on the shelf and you're ready to go. Trioxine tablet, whatever you want. You can use it for a wood stove, just feed wood into it. The pot will sit on top of it and you're ready to cook. And I also carry, I guess this would be uh, the equivalent of a hobo tool. It's got a knife, fork, and spoon in it. Although right now, I think it's stuck. I generally don't use it. Generally carry plastic forks with me if I'm going camp because I really don't like washing stuff up until I get home. You never know what you're going to drag home from the creek, but if you need to wash it, wash it. There we go. Got a potato peeler, just in case you find potatoes hanging in a tree or something. Over on this side, we have a can opener. It might be a dinky fork, but it works. And we have one big awl. Why they put an awl on a hobo tool, I don't know, but this thing is great for repairing anything you need to repair, including leather. It'll go straight through it. The knife is fairly sharp, and like I said, most of this gear that you see is, is older. So if you go off looking for this, I would check in the antique gear, possibly on eBay. Um, you might be able to find it there, but if all else fails, I bought a cheap Boy Scout set of knife, fork, and spoons, and I cut it just above the connection, so I have, a, I guess, a full-size fork, a butter knife, and a spoon. So if I need to dig something, got a spoon. I don't have to worry about ruining this one because I have that one. If I need to skewer something, I could cook it on here over the fire. And if I need to uh, dig for worms, I guess, I have that or whatever. But it does come with a can opener. Woohoo! 18 can openers. Behind the camera is a good friend of mine helped me do this video because I don't have a tripod. And most of you know who watch my channel, I'm just starting out in this, so. Um, I don't have a tripod, so he's over there holding it. So if it's a bit shaky, hopefully YouTube will fix it for me. And outside of all of that, inside of there, I carry four extra batteries for my flashlights. 
I carry them inside of here so that if I get it wet, or if I get wet, I should say, at least they're inside of this and I don't have to worry about them going bad. So anyway, anyway, Dozer, that's my kit. Rest of YouTube land, that's the kit I carry. Um, just in case you're wondering, the whole kit, rifle and all, weighs right around 12 to 15 pounds, I guess. But it's arranged in such a way that I don't really feel that much weight on me. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a variety of things here I can make food with, catch food, get food. I it guess it's just a, it comes down to what you want to carry, what you feel you'll need. Um, if you're big like me, I'm, I'm a bigger man, and I'm also diabetic, and I'm also up there in age, I'm almost 50. I don't feel I need to carry a whole lot of kit, although this looks like a whole lot, it really isn't. There's some people out there carry 70 pounds of kit for a weekend trip. This will get me through three days or longer, especially if I take the rifle with me. Um, outside of that, I really don't know what else to say about my kit. I like it. I've been using it for years. Obviously, it's well aged. And, well, that's about it. So I thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you like what you see, do my sub thing there and subscribe to my channel. I'll be trying to get a video once a week. It's been raining here. It's been really hot. And uh, I know that's no excuse for the heat, but I don't like the heat. I'm a cold person. So, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time on YouTube, and we'll see what we can come up with then.